communion is our daily or weekly, however often we do communion, reminder of who Jesus is and what he did for us. So as we take this communion, we remember that he gives us life and he gives us salvation and he came to fulfill the prophecy. He came, you know, they, they've been saying from the beginning, literally, literally from the fall, they started talking about Jesus and his coming and how he was going to bring restoration and reconciliation. And so this reminds us that he is a promise keeper, that he comes through and that he will continue to come through. We've been given a taste of it by Jesus coming and we will get, an, we will get the full helping of it when, when there's the recreation at the end. So Lord Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you're a promise keeper. We thank you that you come to this earth, that you are in charge, that you are the wonderful counselor, that the government is on your shoulders. You are the Prince of Peace. And we thank you, Lord Jesus. And when we are not feeling at peace, Lord Jesus, may you come into this wafer, this cracker, this piece of bread, this whatever it is that we're eating to represent you, Lord Jesus, that you would come into it and come into our bodies and fill our hearts with your peace. May we remember who you are and whose we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Opening this thing might be one the most stressful part of my day. Because <laughs> I'm always afraid I'm going to spill it. And we have white carpet. It's even more scary. <laughs> All right. So... Jesus came to give us life, and we have that life because of his death, because of his sacrifice. He took our death. He took the punishment we deserve because we mess up all the time. And he's like, all right, all right, all right. You guys can't seem to handle this um, by yourselves. You can't do good enough, so I'm going to take care of this. And he reconciles us to the Father. And so, once again, Chris, Christmas reminds us of, his, of his birth, and Easter reminds us of his death. And he dies so that we can have life. So, Lord Jesus, I just thank you for giving us life. I thank you that through you, I know that forever I will be with you. That no matter what junk happens to me on this life, in this life, in this earth, when my time here is over, my time is not over. Because I have eternity with you. And I get to hang out with you in heaven. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Through your sacrifice, we get to hang out with the Father in heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so did you guys know, when I, well, not did you know, when I was in England, oh, four or five years ago, there's this rest pub that's going to become a hotel, which is kind of sad, um, in Oxford called the Eagle and the Child, and it's the place where J.R.R. Tolkien and C.S. Lewis used to hang out. They were part of this writer's group called the Inklings, and so they would get together every week, I imagine with beer, I don't know, bourbon, tea, coffee, whatever they drank, they would hang out in this pub, and they would talk about philosophy, and, and, and they wrote, so J.R.R. Tolkien wrote The Hobbit and all the um, Lord of the Rings books, and C.S. Lewis wrote The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and all the Narnia books. So if you've seen or read any of the Narnia stories, or you've seen or read The Hobbit or any of the Lord of the Rings stories, those two guys were friends. And they hung out, and I imagine, because it was a writer's group, that they would hang out spitballing ideas. Like, okay, I've got this idea for the story, because I imagine all writers kind of track out the whole storyline before they start to write. You know, like my niece, she's like, she loves Harry Potter. She's like, I'm going to write a book. I'm like, okay, so what's the story? She's like, I don't know, I've got this princess. I'm like, okay, would you need, like, before you start to write, you got to have kind of an idea of what the whole story is going to be, right? And so I imagine that Tolkien and Lewis would sit there and just spitball, like, okay, I'm going to do this. Oh, you could have a creature that looks like this. And because both of their stories take place in mythical places with mythical creatures. And, and, but both stories are actually based in biblical themes. I don't know if you realize, realize that. So like Aslan is Jesus, if you've read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobes. Um, and Aragorn is, is the king, like he's the, the reluctant king. You know, so like both stories are actually based very much on biblical principles. And so I imagine they sat there like talking about what it's going to be like and, and kind of hashing out their story even before the story was written. And God does that too. So God sat there and like thought of what the whole story of humanity was going to be before he even made us. Because he knows how it's all going to play out. He's already in his head, even though we have free will, which that's mind-boggling. We won't even get into that. Somehow we have free will, and yet God knows how the whole story is going to play out. And so 
God gives us a glimpse of this. It's kind of like God and Isaiah sitting there in a pub spitballing the story. And so God gave, God told Isaiah, who's one of the prophets of the Old Testament, one of the big prophets of the Old Testament, kind of gave him a little like sneak peek of what was going to happen. So this week's verse comes from Isaiah 9. And and it's Isaiah kind of telling us a little bit about what Jesus is going to be like. Now, Isaiah lived like 400 years before Jesus. So it's pretty neat to me that he was able to predict, and this verse only has three or four of the predictions, but there are tons of predictions in the Old Testament that all came true in Jesus. And so God gave us little snippets here and there of what Jesus would be like, where he would come from, what, it, what he would do, like how his story would play out. And so we're going to talk a little bit about some of those today in Isaiah number 9, 1 through 7. It says, Nevertheless, there will be no more gloom for those who are in distress. Hallelujah, no more gloom. I'll take that. In the past, he humbled the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the future, he will honor Galilee by the nations, the way, by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. And on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. Hallelujah. Huzzah. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as a people. They, re they rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest. As warriors rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdened them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning. They will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it. With justice and righteousness from the t that time on and forever, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And I, there's so much, like, there's just so much good stuff in here. Like, and this is only, like, half of Isaiah 9. And there's so much good stuff in here. And I think about, I think about where we are in 2020. Like, I think a lot of people say this is a year of darkness and depression and distress. And yeah, he says, don't worry. And the Old Testament prophets say this a lot. It's crap right now. It's junky right now. There is a lot of hurting and a lot of pain and a lot of darkness right now. But don't worry. The good guy's coming. It's all going to work out. They kind of say this all the time. Like, look, I know it looks bad now, but trust me, it's going to get better. Okay? If you guys have ever watched, this just came to my mind. Friends, Phoebe, they're like, Phoebe, you got to watch A Wonderful Life. And she watches only like the first 75% of it. And she's like, why do they call this A Wonderful Life? That's a crappy life. <laughs> and she's so mad because these people duped her into watching this movie. And they're like, this is not A Wonderful Life. They're like, did you watch it through the end? She's like, no, I couldn't take it anymore. And like, well, you got to watch the whole story. <laughs> and that's where we kind of are. Like some of us get to that point where we're, we're like Phoebe watching. If you watch George Bailey's story, just through the point where he's standing on the bridge, or just through the point where he's gone back in time, you're like, that's a crappy life. This is terrible. But if you watch it all the way through the end, you see that the townspeople come, come through for George Bailey. And that's, we, some of us right now, are in that position of George Bailey seeing the past. When, not, when he's never existed. And we're like, it's, it's a terrible life. This is a crappy life. But God's like, no, 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 I've written the story. Don't worry. It's going to work out. Okay? Like, just keep reading the story. Just keep watching the story. And so I think about all these epic stories, these really big, amazing stories that they've made 15 movies out of. Okay? So, like, I love Star Wars. And the Star Wars movies, I've read all the Tolkien and Hobbit books. I've read and watched all the Narnia books. And in all these big, epic, long stories... The, there's this evil, whatever, evil emperor, there's Sauron in the Lord of the Rings, there's the White Witch and the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and they are oppressing the people, and they're keeping them down, and, and it, they look so powerful, they look undefeatable. And yet, there's almost always a prophecy of someone who's going to come and destroy the bad guy, and everyone's just waiting for it. They're like, please. Like, and so they're constantly looking for it. And so when that prophetic person or persons come along, they're like, oh! This is it. And then they're kind of filled with hope, like, okay, yes, the prophecy is starting. We know it's going to work out. Okay? So in Star Wars, and then at the end of those movies, of those epics, there's a huge celebration scene. 
Okay, you throw in, like, Star Wars A New Hope. At the end, when they defeat the Death Star, they have this huge ceremony. Everyone's all dressed and looking great, and Princess Leia puts the medals on Luke and Han and Chewie, okay? In The Lord of the Rings, at the end, Aragorn is crowned king, and the whole country and all the elves and the whatever, all the creatures are there, and they're like, ah, and they have a big celebration. In The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, when they defeat the White Witch, there's a huge party and a huge celebration, and the four kings and queens of Adam are all crowned king and it's like huzzah, a huge party and so that is gonna ha is happening and yet will still happen we live in this weird time where we like see that it has started to happen but we kind of like so the evil the bad guy has been defeated and yet the good guy's not fully his reign is not fully there it's kind of like it's kind of like when a woman is pregnant like she knows she's going to be a mom she is a mom now, but she's not changing diapers yet. So she's living knowing that it's going to happen because she's pregnant and she watches her belly grow and she's puking in her back hurts or whatever. <laughs> but, but she's not yet chasing her child around, reading stories to her kid, worrying that they're out driving around, you know, texting and driving or whatever, like whatever age their kids are. So we kind of live in that period of like, we know for sure it's gonna happen, we've seen the start of it, but we're not totally living in, in it, okay? And so this Isaiah, 400 years before Jesus, says, like, okay, I know it sucks right now. It's bad. It's dark. It's ugly. The oppressor's winning. I get it. But don't worry, because God has a plan, and it's going to be awesome. And, it, and Jesus is coming, and it says, for us, to a child is born. So he predicted Jesus is going to be born as a child. He's going to be born, come out of Galilee. He's going to, um, I'm trying to think what else is just in this one. There's so many prophecies in there. Um, but so it says all these things. And then it says, and Jesus is going to be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That's all good stuff. You know? And so Jesus is all of these things. And it says the government is on his shoulders. And I think in 2020, there are a lot of people who feel like it's all out of control. It's all falling apart. Every, the world's like gone to... H-E double hockey sticks and hand basket, and it's all, but we forget that Jesus is still wonderful counselor. He is still the mighty God. He is still the everlasting father. He is still the prince of peace, and the government is on his shoulders. So even when it looks terrible, it, it, not all is lost, and we just need to remember that. And so when we've got this giant beast of depression or loneliness or angst or whatever ugh, is coming at us, and it's all we can see because it's right in front of us, we have to be like, wait a minute. Those in darkness have seen a great light. I just need to look past that. Like, do one of these and look around that giant monster that's in front of us and see the light because it has come. We're fortunate to live on the other side of this prophecy. Like, before Jesus was born, they lived in hope that this might happen someday. But we've seen that God came through with Jesus, so that tells us that, okay, part of this prophecy has already come true, which means the rest of it's going to come true in its entirety. And I love that because... It says justice and righteousness from that time on forever. That means from the time that Jesus was born, justice and righteousness has happened and is continuing to happen. It, says, it doesn't say justice and righteousness while that child's alive on earth. It says from that time on. That means that, means that Jesus is still on his throne. Still. Even in all the junk. Even in yucky 2020. It is still. And the reason that all this happens is because of zeal. Like think of someone who's a zealot. Like that word zealot means they are like, over the top, believing that. God is over the top loving us. He is so for us that it's like overwhelming. And it's, so it says because of the zeal of the Lord that this will happen. Because of his overwhelming love for us, all of this is happening and will continue to happen. Totally lost my place. Yeah, it's not on the comment. <laughs> so we need to remember that we're living the time the enemy has been defeated until the big ceremony where everyone's like, huzzah! We're living in that time. So, like, the evil has been defeated and the great party is about to happen. Okay, so when you're, when you feel the great looming of ugh over you, whatever it is, and we've all have it, we all have times when we feel like it's all, all hope is lost. Okay? Like, when they are trying to defeat the Death Star and Luke is chasing through and he's got all the fighter jets chasing him, you know, it looks like all is lost. And then Han Solo comes riding in with the Millennium Falcon and Luke blows up the Death Star. Huzzah! Okay, so like, 
If you feel alone and you feel like you're about to get shot down, understand that the Millennium Falcon is coming. Okay, in the Lord of the Rings, it looks like Sauron is going to win. Or not Sauron, the other bad guy. And then the trees wake up and come and fight and like, and then they win. In the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, it, Aslan has been slayed and the, and the White Witch is winning and like, oh no, it's, it's terrible, the White Witch is going to win. And then Aslan comes back to life and, and kills her. Huzzah! And they all win. <laughs> okay, so we have that moment coming for us. And so we have to win, we have to live in expectation of that. And realizing that God is still on his throne, he is still good, there is a light in our darkness. So whenever you are feeling down this year, I want you to remember that there is light past the darkness that seems to be looming right over you. And we just have to hold on to that. We have to know that our Savior has come and is coming, which is this weird thing that's hard to wrap our minds around, but he has come and is continuing to come for us. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right, so I'll do a, I'll do a prayer, and we got a song, and benediction. I put them in out of order. <laughs> Heavenly Father, you are good. Your zeal and love for us is more than we can comprehend in our minds. And we thank you for sending Jesus. And I am so grateful to live after Jesus. I am so grateful to see that you are a promise keeper, so I can hold on to that when I have promises in my life that right now seem hopeless. When I have things in my life right now that seem so dark that I can't possibly see around, you bring the great light. Lord Jesus, you are the great light. And Lord Jesus, when we are feeling down, when we are feeling depressed, when we are feeling lonely, when we feel like all hope is lost, come and bring your light. Whisper into our ears, I'm here. I've got this. The government is on my shoulders. Be our wonderful counselor. Be our prince of peace. Be our heavenly father. Counsel us, hug us, hold us, provide for us, Lord Jesus, heal and restore us, because you are good. In the name of Jesus Christ, I demand that this virus be demolished and that healing and hope be restored. May we have a new, brighter, lighter, better normal coming, because you are coming, Lord Jesus. You have come and you continue to come in increasing measure. You are increasing your nation. You are increasing our joy. Help us to see that. When the enemy has us pinned down and is telling us that all is lost, come and send, Lord Jesus, send someone, send something to remind us of who you are. Bless all of our health care workers, our first responders, Lord Jesus. Bless them with increased healing and hope and strength to get through this hard time. All of those who are feeling alone and depressed and hopeless, Lord Jesus, come and bring a great light into their hearts. May they see or hear something, may you break through it, whether it's a commercial on TV or a Facebook post or someone calls them out of the blue. Lord Jesus, may you break through and heal our hearts. May you provide abundantly for all of us because you are good and holy and we love you and we are yours. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And the final song is Emmanuel, number 243. <laughs> Father, watch over everyone watching this, listening to this, everyone in our congregation. Bring us healing and peace in this season, and Lord Jesus, bring us back into this building so that we can be a community of Christ followers again. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <laughs>